Hi there and welcome to the October 2023 solar update. But before we get into the stats, let's just remind ourselves of my solar panel system. Uh, so 14 Jinko 390 watt panels, uh, totaling 5.4 kilowatts, 10 on the south and four on the east, and a solar edge four kilowatt inverter. So that's the solar side. On the battery side, we've got the three kilowatt AC inverter and the eight kilowatt Gen 1 Give Energy battery. And then of course, I've got a few extra bits and bobs such as the My Energy Eddy heating the hot water, the Harvey and the Hub, and the Hypervolt EV charger. Okay, so here we are, the month of October. In total, 369.54 kilowatt hours. Not amazing as you'll see in a moment compared to last year, really. Um, so here is the month. Uh, very much a mixture of highs and lows, as you'd probably expect during October. Uh, the peak there on the 15th, we had 27 kilowatt hours that day. So that day was pretty good. Although obviously our worst on the 20th, uh, <laughs> you know, 600 watt hours there, really. Um, not very good at all. And those kind of days surrounding it, and then it it peaked a little bit higher a couple of days later and then it was kind of fairly low again really obviously the first kind of 10 days of the month the first couple of days was, was still bad left over from the end of september but after that we did have a kind of a week of fairly good weather with kind of the averages being you know 18 17 19 a day which is pretty good really for october uh, but all in all uh, 369 if I divide that by 31 I get 11.9 average 11.9 kilowatt hours per day average for the month so here's a look at the uh, whole of the year as you can see here uh, green is 2023 and blue is last year 2022 so October certainly was not as good uh, this year as last year last year I actually had 476 and this year 369 so you know that's 100 kilowatt hours uh, worse uh, this year which is quite a lot really isn't it um, especially when you're kind of working out those averages it's a good kind of I don't know four or five days kind of you know lost really uh, when you work it out although September as you can see last month was a little bit better actually at 555 compared to 530 so I suppose we're going to kind of expect that really uh, last November actually had 180 so uh, be really interesting to see if uh, that can be matched or beaten next month so this is the uh, hypervolt dashboard online so I can see how much uh, energy I put into the EVs really and in October we didn't put hardly any in at all um, we usually charged up at other locations really although in September you know we did have a, a very high spike when we put 273 kilowatt hours in the cars uh, mainly overnight and not during the daytime anymore because obviously we're getting paid more for exporting than we are uh, importing and uh, we only used 26 just over 26 kilowatt hours uh, in October for charging the EVs so this is the online dashboard for uh, my energy account and uh, this is the eddy as you can see here we went away at the end of october so i actually turned the eddy off because we didn't need to heat the hot water at all because we weren't here but in october what i've actually done is um the boiler was on for a little bit for heating in october but we didn't turn on the hot water part of the boiler just for the radiators so what i'd been doing was i'd actually been charging up and scheduling the eddy to come on overnight throughout the whole of October um, to charge the hot water from, you know, from kind of one in the morning until about 530 in the morning when it's on the cheap rate on intelligent. So it's been getting a good few hours to kind of heat up and you can see that during the day. But I've also left it to top up with solar during the day as well if it kind of needed it, which more often than not it did. So you should see kind of two spikes during the day. The first spike being the overnight, kind of, you know, three in the morning time. And then during the day as well, sort of lunchtime, once the battery's refilled itself. And don't forget, I'm filling the battery 100% every night at the moment. Uh, and then it just needs a little bit of a top up from solar. And then when that's full, then it puts a little bit more into the uh, hot water as well, ready for the kind of evening time. So this has been really a trial, I think, at the moment to see if it's worth uh, 
running the uh, immersion at seven and a half pence overnight to heat it and then a little bit on solar during the day as opposed to letting the boiler kind of uh, heat the hot water so I'm going to do some meter readings on that and try and figure out which is the best way to go. If you've already worked this out, please tell me uh, in the comments because it would really help me out um, if you've kind of calculated uh, what is the better way to do it, whether it's to you know, not let the eddy get any solar at all, uh, the water heater, and just let it run through kind of cheap rate overnight, or whether to not let it have any electricity at all on, on the immersion and actually just heat it all through kind of gas. Now that gas has kind of dropped down, my kind of uh, rate in now is about six and a half pence uh, per kilowatt hour on gas. And obviously my overnight intelligent is seven and a half P per kilowatt hour. Uh, but my export is kind of 12 P per kilowatt hour. So, yeah, so this month's been pretty good. Um, 125 kilowatt hours in total went into the eddy. Obviously, some of that was overnight and being paid for on intelligent and some of it was free via solar something you can also do within here within this dashboard now is actually export your data um to well png is really just an image so that's this page really is an image but uh, you can download the csv data in here as well which is pretty good so let's just have a quick look at that so if you download your my energy uh, usage this is what you get so you get a bit more of a detailed view what they're doing is they're telling you how much uh, kilowatt hours went into your eddy each hour which is really useful uh, so you could actually work out or I could actually work out how much I actually used um, overnight on intelligent on the eddy compared to how much I put on uh, using kind of solar so you could obviously work out that 5 30 in the morning is when intelligent kind of stops so you can see here that I ran that for three hours uh, we could just auto sum that up so 1.95 on that one and then during the day it kind of ran for a little bit so let's just sum that up is that correct yes uh so 1.1 came in on solar so i mean i could work out do a little bit of work in excel here and kind of work out for the month how much i actually did uh spend just on the eddy heating the water and how much i did uh spend using uh solar or how much it used using solar, should I say. So I'll probably do that again when I come to compare kind of what the uh, gas boiler is up to compared to doing it overnight as well. But useful little feature that. So this is the month of October on the actual Octopus um, app because my Octopus dashboard still doesn't show me the data, even though I've complained about it. And I've even asked them to email me the CSV data now. Um, as they say, they're still working on my dashboard that it won't show my data anymore. So we started the month with a really high uh, value of about 26 kilowatt hours. I think we must have charged the EV, uh, the little i3 for 18 kilowatt hours that night, plus the battery, uh, plus a bit of hot water. And then the rest of the month was really kind of an average evening was kind of nine to 12 kind of kilowatt hours charging the battery and heating the hot water throughout the month until then we went away at the end of the month and we just sort of had the battery filling itself up every night and those values were about four kilowatt hours per night on a cheap rate right so that brings us nicely on to some figures for the month so grid import uh, we imported 316 kilowatt hours overnight on the cheap rate of seven and a half pence uh, on octopus intelligent that worked out at 23 pounds and 70 pence and then we also imported 8.6 kilowatt hours at the expensive rate of 31 pence that equaled two pounds 67 and the export uh, we actually exported 165 kilowatt hours at the 12p scottish power rate which uh, gives us 19 pounds and 80 pence so if I uh, subtract those values, it ends up being £6.57 for the whole month on uh, electricity, not including the standing charges, of course. So gas. Yes, we did use some gas. Uh, we turned the boiler back on for some to heat some uh, radiators up to heat the house for a bit. And I read the meter and I worked it out um, that we actually used 277 kilowatt hours 
the new gas rate is for us is 6.78 pence that's on the flexible octopus gas uh, tariff and that equaled 18 pounds and 83 pence not including the standing charge again so for the standing charges the gas is 27.47 pence a day times 31 days gives us 8.52 uh, the electric 42 pence a day times 31 days is 13 pounds and two pence so over 20 pounds a month now for standing charge over those 31 days so if we add all those together so the gas 1883 use plus the 852 standing charge works out to be 27 pounds and 35 pence for the gas and the electric 26 pounds and 37 pence of uh, use of import and plus the 13 pounds and two pence for the standing charge but then if we subtract the export of 19 pounds and 80 pence we get 19 pounds and 59 pence so if i add the gas and the electric together that equals 46.94 for the whole month of october so that was october 2023 let me know how you got on with your solar system uh, was it better than last year or worse let me know uh, thanks for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber and leave us a comment and give us a like on the video if you did like the video and i'll see you soon